question I often get asked is what is public engagement? Public engagement by its very definition is a two-way conversation. It is a conversation between you and some non-academic individuals or individuals, the uh, members of the public. And that's actually quite an important definition. A lot of people think public engagement is academics standing there and talking about their work. And that's great and that's brilliant, but it's not public engagement. Public engagement is having a conversation with people outside of your specialty, outside of your area of expertise. And as well as talking to them about your research, having them talk to you about their needs. And that really helps you focus your research question and what you could be working on is what your target uh, group or intervention needs from you. So when it comes to actually doing public engagement, think carefully about the steps you need to do to engage and to be actively and successfully engaged. And so that is a few different things. Who is it you wanna have that conversation with? What is your target audience? Uh, what do they need from you? And what do you need from them? And be quite open about this. You can say to people, look, I'm a researcher and I'm doing this and I uh, am not clear about this or I don't understand uh, how this thing affects you and your life. And so quite carefully line up and set up and think about um, what it is you're going to people, what you're looking for from this relationship. Because, because bear in mind, it is a two-way relationship. When you're trying to think about what type of method you might want to use for public engagement, think about the requirements of the audience you're interacting with, as well as what you need from it. So for example, at the moment, during the COVID-19 pandemic we find ourselves in, uh, methods of engagement are probably going to be very much targeted online by using different online platforms where you can have your conversations. Whereas historically, a lot of public engagement would be going along to town halls, to meetings, to uh, specific focus groups or working groups who are members of the community and have an interest that overlaps with yours. Nowadays, more and more public engagement is online. And the uh, mechanism, the method is very much driven not, by, not just by what you want or need, but what your audience wants and or needs. Uh, are you working with a particular uh, age group who might not have access to the internet if you're working with um, substantially older individuals or might have access issues? Are you working uh, in a country where internet access isn't a given? Are you working where uh, written word or forms or paper might be better? These are the kind of things you wanna think about when you're designing um, the logistics, the practicalities of your conversation, of your public engagement. One of the things that I've found working from home for, well, let's be honest, almost a year now since uh, we found ourselves in this uh, post-COVID world, is it's actually changed a little bit the way I think about what public engagement means. Historically, for me, public engagement has been very much meeting people, seeing people, interacting with small community groups on a um, small group ratio, tens and 20 people at a time. Where now public engagement can very much be online, it can change the boundaries and the borders of what we consider to be our target population or publicly engaged group. So for example, if you're working with um, specific diseases or uh, people affected by uh, specific conditions that are not UK based, suddenly it's actually a lot easier to do public engagement based on the internet because people are more used to, are more are comfortable speaking to a web camera and a microphone like I'm doing at the moment. And it has actually changed the way I think about where my engagement is going to take place. And not just physically as an online, but globally, maybe my um, impact can be not just UK based, but my public can be anyone in the world. Because public engagement is by definition a two-way conversation, there are some positives and negatives of different types of online platforms for having those type of conversations. For example, I often write for a media group called The Conversation, and they're a group that specializes in taking scientists or academics and write uh, about their research and their work professionally for a public audience. It's a great way of disseminating findings, but it's not a conversation, it's a one-way communication. 
So that's not an example of public engagement. But emerging from that, because I have social media um, handles that I use professionally, like for example, my Twitter account, and that's associated with my conversation articles, people often reach out to me and say, hey, I read your work and I think you're an idiot. And that sucks, that's to have social media, right? But they'll often be like, hey, I read your work and I thought this was different to that. And then you end up saying, well, that's interesting. I hadn't considered obesity from that point of view or the socioeconomic angles associated with aging outside of just the pure physiological research. And you end up with really interesting conversations, ironically, with people that you wouldn't otherwise be talking to. And so while the internet might not be um, a perfect avenue for having these conversations, it can open them up. Always think about that idea about a one-way versus a two-way conversation. Are you just telling someone about your work or are you having a conversation about your work where it can lead? And are you open to hearing ideas that you might not have actually considered going into that conversation? So when it comes to public engagement, one often overlooked aspect of it is the evaluation of success. Having done a public engagement event or activity or even series of events integrated with your research, how do you know it's worked or not? How do you know it's valuable or not? Well, there's two ways we can take this, two ways we can look at this. From a KEF point of view, from the knowledge exchanges framework point of view, the university does need to know a few simple matrices. How many people have you interacted with? How many people have you reached? And how much time did you put into it? And that's kind of important for our feedback. But as well as that, there's much more overarching uh, impact that can be seen that starts to overlap into the research impact and the research excellence framework of your work. So for example, it's by having this integration of public engagement and research that gives you a true outcome that's measurable and impactful and really wonderful to see. One example of this, would be uh, Professor Rachel Aldred in the Active Travel Academy, who has done some amazing work in public engagement in uh, design of cities and urban spaces and talked to different working groups, different people, different political and um, residential groups about the design of streets and cities. And this has led to changes of urban design, which has changed the way that people live their lives. And it's been really uh, great to see that that public engagement has led to the changing of a question, a focus of a question that's led to research and intervention and real impactful research that's come full circle back to that original question that people were asking and talking to her about. Let's be honest, public engagement can be scary. It can be uncomfortable and it can be difficult to get involved with, especially when you're starting out. There's a few different ways you can approach this. One thing a lot of people find successful and what I did at the start of my research career was got involved in other people's public engagement. And this allowed me to kind of dip my toe in the field and see what other people did and find what worked for me. This can be as simple as um, professional bodies or learned societies that you're a member of often advertise. It can be your friends and colleagues at the university who might be taking part in activities. It can be, excuse the name check, something like the Difference Festival or Different Conversations, our podcast. And it just trying things on and seeing what works for you. And there's a few lessons we can take from this. Uh, one, it'll go badly at least once. And I'm really sorry to say that, but it's very true because public engagement is talking to people who don't share your point of view and it might sometimes be uncomfortable. But two, and I can guarantee you this, it does get better and you'll get better at it with time and practice. So if you are thinking about getting involved in public engagement, the university actually provides a number of really useful tools and resources to you. So for example, you can reach out to the reach out to the research and knowledge exchange office, or even have a look at their blog. And they have a number of interesting articles you can have a look at for this. If you want to reach out and just have a chat with me. That's part of my role. Just bounce some ideas off, off me and we can have a bit of a talk about what you're looking for, what your motivations are and who you're trying to talk to. There's also what's called the National Coordinating Center for Public Engagement, the NCCPE. And they provide a number of excellent resources for different types of scientists or academics about public engagement, about how it can be useful, about traps and pitfalls, about different ideas for presenting different topics, and all sorts of really useful toolkits, which you might find useful. And you might not find the thing you're looking for there, but just even reading about different approaches and different ideas can really trigger something in your head and lead to a useful or unexpected idea.